It's always a pleasure being on your screen on Ladies Digest, where issues in the world of women are discussed. Ladies Digest is proudly brought to you by AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. And this is Pinktober, which makes it the month of breast awareness. And we are at the premises of the Stay Well Healthcare to discuss with an expert on this issue. Do stay tuned. I'm Joni Kuyaiwa. You've been diagnosed with breast cancer. Once anyone hears the word cancer, it's hard to hear anything else. The first thing you need to do is to take a deep breath. The first emotion many women feel after a diagnosis of breast cancer is shock. How could this be happening to me? This is not your fault, so don't blame yourself. The diagnosis of breast cancer is not an emergency. You have time to catch your breath and figure out the best path for you. Be patient. Let it sink in. We have to figure out what kind of breast cancer you have before we can explore your options. So before even considering your treatment options, it is important that you understand what your doctors have found and where they have found it. Virtually all breast cancer begins in the milk ductal system. Some begin in the ducts themselves and others in the lobules that are at the ends of the ducts. If your cancer is contained within the duct, it is called ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS. If it is in the lobule, it is called lobular carcinoma in situ, or LCIS. It's important for you to realize that these in situ lesions are not considered cancer and they're not life-threatening. If abnormal cells are found in the breast tissue surrounding the ducts or lobules, it is called invasive breast cancer. The cells have escaped the ducts. If mutated cells are found in any other organ, it is called stage 4 or metastatic breast cancer. Once you know what you have and where it is, your medical team will make recommendations for your best treatment options. We will be looking at the different types of breast cancers, the variations in the biology of breast cancer cells, and available treatment options for each type. It's going to feel like a long road, but we'll be with you every step of the way. Welcome back, and this is Still Ladies Digest. Remember, you can catch us up on our social media handles at AAU TV, on Facebook and YouTube at the Association of African Universities. And you can follow our um, Instagram handle at Ladies Digest. Um, as I spoke earlier on in my introduction, we are speaking about um, breast cancer. And I'll give a brief introduction from the World Health Organization General um, statistics on cancer. It says that cancer, according to the WHO, is the second leading cause of death globally and was responsible for 8.8 .8 million deaths in 2015. Globally, nearly one in six deaths is due to cancer, and cancer is a generic term for a large group of diseases that can affect any part of the body. And um, we'll be treating the breast cancer, we'll be focusing on breast cancer. And I have in my guest a very beautiful lady, a doctor, Dr. Emilia Kwatema Ababio. She's a medical officer at the Stay Well Healthcare, and I would allow her to introduce herself because she's gotten a lot of portfolio. Welcome, <laughs> Doc. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure being on your screen yeah. today. <laughs> My name is Dr. Emilia Kwatima Abibu. Okay, I'm a medical okay. officer with Stay Well Healthcare. Um, I volunteer a lot for breast cancer, yeah. so um, I do some work with Breast Love. Um, they do a lot of outreaches when it comes to breast cancer and then I volunteer also with Restore. They are okay. in charge of um, putting together funds to provide free reconstructive plastic surgery not, for, not just for breast cancer patients, but okay. people that need plastic, plastic surgery Plastic surgeries well. in yes. general. Yes. Oh, okay. That, and I love your attire, your thank pink. You, thank yeah. you. Thank um, you. I'm going pink for yes, breast cancer yes, this month. Yeah, yes. thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be treating, and I see you are really into breast, and and that makes you an expert <laughs> for this for this um, discussion. Yeah. So we are talking about breast cancer today. Yeah. We know it's it's something that it's it's a global thing. Yeah. It's not just um, unique to one continent or one country. Um, my first um, question would be. If I always start my question with maybe as a 15-year-old girl, 
I come to you, just um, a secondary student, I come to you, how would you explain breast cancer to me that I would be able to understand and even maybe help out with my friends and all that? So I want to know how it is and how it forms. Okay, so cancer is overgrowth of cells okay, cancer without in general. boundaries or control. So breast cancer is simply overgrowth of the breast tissue and the breast cells. Okay. This could be as a result of over expression of something we call the growth factor protein and the actual pathophysiology of um, breast cancer is still being studied oh. it's um, when it comes to the cause especially everyone wants to know what causes breast cancer um, we are still trying to figure that out just like wow. many other cancers in the world it's wow. still something we are trying to wrap our heads around okay. so yes it's just the overgrowth of breast tissue without control okay. and as we are well aware of is the commonest type of cancer among women sure. in let's do worldwide first it's affecting more than 2.1 million women every year and in ghana it's the it's also the commonest cause of is the commonest cause of cancer among women accounting for about 25 percent um of all cancers among women and it accounts for 16 percent of all cancers in ghana wow. whether male female generally okay. all the cancers wow. as wow. well wow. yes so okay you as you said there are no um causes but okay before then i would want to know um i i always hear of the benign um um lumps or whatever mm -hmm. can you speak to that Okay, so breast cancer is not the only breast disease. Okay. That's the most important thing you have to know. Okay. The fact that you have something wrong with your breast or you're worried about your breast for any reason doesn't mean that it's necessarily breast cancer. We okay. have other benign diseases of the breast that are not malignant. So okay. when we talk about malignancy, that's when we talk about actual cancers. cancers. The benign ones are, you know, they could be lumps, they could be problems, but they're not necessarily Cancers. So oh, there are okay. other diseases of the breast okay. that are not necessarily cancers. cancers and that's where they, they, will be, they could be benign. The benign. Okay, okay. So I want to talk about the predisposing factor because I want to think that as a woman, just by virtue of the fact that I'm a woman, I am predisposed to this condition. Yes. What would be some of the predisposing factors of um, breast cancer? Okay, so... Uh, there are several, several, several factors that have been implicated in the formation of breast cancer. Okay. Um, we can divide them into modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors. Okay. Modifiable risk factors are things you have control over, things you can change. Okay. Non-modifiable right. risk factors are things you have absolutely no control over, sure. things you cannot change. So let's start with the ones we can change. We talk about smoking. It increases your chances of cancer generally, but especially breast cancer too. Um, drinking alcohol. We also talk about obesity, okay. especially the post-menopausal obesity. Okay. Yes. And then we can also talk about fatty meals and unhealthy living, lack of exercise. They all contribute to some extent to breast cancer. Okay. And then for the non-modifiable risk factors, as you said correctly, yeah. by virtue of the fact that you're female, it makes you more at risk of getting breast cancer. Not to say men do not get breast cancer, men also get breast cancer worldwide. I think the incidence rate is about 1%. Oh. But in Ghana, it's slightly higher. Wow. So Ghanaian men should be careful. They should be careful, I see. <laughs> yeah, in Ghana, it's slightly okay. higher. Um, what I found was, I think, 2.5% hmm. in Ghanaian men. But definitely being female is one of the risk factors risk, of yeah, getting yeah, yeah. breast cancer. Okay. Um, increasing age, there's nothing you can do about your age. As you grow, your chances of getting breast cancer are increasing. Yeah. And in Ghana, our incident ages are between 40 to 49. Those are the peak 40 ages to 49. for okay. breast cancer in Ghana. So um, does it mean even after 49 or um, 50 something, 60, they are not so much at risk? So they are still at risk. Okay. Increasing age is definitely at risk. Okay. But then that age, age bracket, bracket. Okay. is the highest. Okay. So after 50 years, your chances are still higher than maybe a 30 year old. Oh, okay. But it's definitely lower, lower than, than someone four, in the 40s. 40s. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. I see. And then um, Eli Menaki. When we talk about Eli Menaki, it means the age at which you had your first period. I and it's been shown that women who had their period before the age of 12, they're at a higher risk of breast cancer. 
Wow. And if you have your menopause too late, uh -huh. you're also at a higher risk. And by too late, we mean over 55 years. If you're 55 years and you're still getting your period, your yeah, risk is definitely yes. higher. And then family history of breast cancer. That's a common one. Everyone yes, knows. Yeah, yeah. Yes, most cancers run in families. families. We have certain genes that are associated with breast cancer, the BRCA1, BRCA2. So when you have, if you have a family history of these, your chances of getting breast cancer is definitely higher than someone who doesn't have this yeah. in their family. Yeah. And then we can also talk about previous history of breast cancer. So if you've had breast cancer before, really? your chances of getting it again is definitely higher than someone who who's never had it. breast cancer before. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. So yes, I think these are the common risk yeah, factors risk you have factors. to look out for if we are talking about breast cancer. Okay. So there's another group okay. that I want to talk about. I'll put it under endocrine factors. Okay, before you talk about that group, yes. before um, the early menarche, mm -hmm. I'm quite interested in that. Is there a reason or has there been any explanation as to why these people who um, um, get their menses early or those who get their, their menopause late fall into or at risk? Has there been any explanation? Yeah, yes, so okay. it's simply um, because they have been exposed to estrogen which is known as the female hormones, mm, okay, yes, okay. for so long. Okay. So once you um, you have your early menarche and then late menopause, so in between, there's so much time for you to be exposed to the so, estrogen. Oh, so your chances so. are definitely higher than someone who waited until they were 16 yes, or 18, 18 before they started getting exposed. And get their menopause exactly. as early as 40 exactly. or 40 something. Exactly. I get it now. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yes. Okay, so you were talking about the endocrine. Yes, the endocrine risk factors. These are factors that it's a bit controversial because some people have control over it, others don't have control over it. Oh, okay. When we, we are talking about the time you have your first child, People who have babies early on in life, and by early I mean eight, as early as 18 years, is very protective. It's protective against breast cancer. Wow. Yes. And it's, I, I get, no, I get <laughs> yes, why you so, said controversial. Yes, so it's, 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 some people have control over it, others don't, don't have control over yeah. it. And then we have nulliparity. It means you never had a baby in your life. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if you never had a baby in your life, your chances of getting breast cancer is definitely it's, higher mm, than someone who had... had children in their lifetime mm -hmm. and okay. then we will also um, look at people who had babies later on in their lives if you're having your first pregnancy after 35 years then you're very high risk for breast cancer wow. you're actually even higher risk than someone who never who had, had a baby exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if you're not careful it will be like <laughs> advisable not to even have at all yeah but uh, I mean, it's neither yeah, here nor there. Not there. Yes, it's neither here nor there. And the some people will go through those ones and still they wouldn't be yes, at risk. Exactly. Yeah. They are just called risk factors. Yes, it doesn't necessarily yes. mean you will get breast cancer just because you had your first pregnancy. First after pregnancy. 35. And then breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is very important and it's been shown to be protective against breast cancer. So if you're going to have a baby, you might as well breastfeed if you can. Yes. Yeah. And then um, hormone replacement therapy. Most menopausal women actually, especially in the advanced countries, tend to be on hormone replacement therapies. Okay. It helps with the hot flashes, the vaginal dryness, a lot of the postmenopausal symptoms. Okay. So yes, it's been shown that for people who have been on it for more than five years, that's when your chances of getting breast cancer increases. increases. So these are the endocrine yeah, risk factors. Risk factors. For breast oh, okay. Cancer. The hormone um, replacement. What is it about? If I um, ask. So they are sort of medications, okay. but they are hormonal. Oh, okay. And what they do is they make going through menopause a lot easier, easier. because they change. Okay. Yeah, is I drastic. know the system yes. and all that. Yes. If you so, live with some old women, you yes. would have so experience. The, the, it's, it's, it's sort of giving you some like, hormonal okay. yes, support. So it helps so to it, cushion, like it cushions exactly, the process. Exactly, exactly. Oh, okay. So if you're in it for more than five years, then your chances increase. Increases, yes. I see. Yeah. So it's, it's, it would be a bit cautious to say that you shouldn't be on it for too long. Well, we always have to weigh yeah. the good Options. and the bad. It's so, true um, yeah. advice is usually based on the what the patients need specifically. Yes. That's true. That's true. So, um, let's go to the signs and symptoms. Yeah. 
Uh, what are some of the red flags that um, ladies or individuals should look out for and that should make them know that well, something is happening, I should come see my physician? Okay, so I always say this and women know thy breast. Sure, you I should like know that. your breast, honestly, because um, every change is important. And if you know your breast and you know yourself well, you're able to even pick up the subtle ones. Sure. So these are changes that you see on yourself and then you rush to your healthcare provider for answers. Okay. And um, for the common ones, we talk about change in size, okay. change in the shape. Many people complain of painless lumps. When we talk about breast cancer, people usually want to talk about lump in the breast, lump in the breast. Yes, there are some breast that cancers is that, the common. Yes, yes, some breast cancers come without lumps. Wow. So it's just important to know your breast so that if you feel like there's any change at all, you should see a doctor for it. Okay. Um, nipple discharge, whether bloody, whether greenish, whether whitish, if you're not breastfeeding, Feeding. you should see your doctor about any kind of nipple discharge. Wow. Yeah. Um, change in the architecture of the nipple. People have, you know, the variety of women, people yes. have different shapes Body and shapes, sizes, yeah. different types of nipples. So if you know yourself, that's when you know when there's a change, change. in the sure. architecture of sure. the nipple as well. And then sometimes you have ulcerations on the on the skin of the breast. You can have dimpling, which is the change in the skin okay. itself. It okay. looks like, I don't know. Like orange, orange peels. Yes, we call it orange. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. So if you see anything of that sort, you should have a check by your doctor, okay. reddening of the skin, any lumps in the armpit, you, the should, armpit. you should talk to your doctor about okay. it. So yes. um, with regards to the lumps, like the normal, the in quote normal boys that occur in the armpit, they can be signs or symptoms of breast cancer, I guess, well, at times. Well, lumps, um, lumps are not boys normal. Are, oh, okay. or they're not normal. normal. So if you're finding lumps around your breast or your armpit, you don't have it's not your headache that is i mean that's why they went to medical school that's let them worry right. about it that's so right. what you do is just see a practitioner about it and i'm sure they'll investigate it and let you know exactly what it is okay yes. okay well we'll speak about the stages mm -hmm. and i would want to know if these signs you mentioned especially the skin dimpling of the skin come as early as as possible but let's go to um, the screening process okay so a lady has come with those signs what what does the um, screening process entail to be able to with terms of a diagnosis to, to be able to come out with um, a result okay so screening for breast cancer is actually quite simple and easy okay um you do the hard part as a woman you do the hard part oh, okay. i mean you stay in your house and then you do all your self breast examination okay. at least once a month. I don't okay. know if I said it before, but yeah. if you're a woman over 20 years, it's your responsibility to screen your own breast um, at least once a month. Okay. So that when you come to us, we use something we call the triple assessment. Okay. For the triple assessment, we are using clinical assessment. Okay. For the, can you help with the, if you can just maybe verbally how um, this um, home screening should be done okay. then we we'll speak about the clinical. Okay, so okay. home screening as I said initially should be done at least once every month okay. and um, it's done in the comfort of your home, your bathroom, wherever there's a mirror okay. because I expect you to look at yourself in the mirror topless. You don't need a bra when you're examining your breast so take off your bra, stand in front of the mirror, expose yourself adequately so they can have a good look at your breast from the front from yeah, the side yeah, yeah. and then most women have big boobs so you have to lift it up to wow. check the underbus to see if there are any changes as well okay. and then um what i do is um after looking into the mirror to look out for the changes we initially spoke yes, about, about you go ahead to palpate and in the palpation you're using the flat of your fingers you're not using one finger, finger or two fingers to just poke, poke. Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense you won't find what you're looking, looking for. for so it's better to use the flat of your fingers if you're going to examine your left breast first your left hand goes behind your head, head so that it gives you space space it gives you adequate exposure for you to examine the breast personally i prefer to divide the breast into four equal quadrants okay. and then i go around wow. in every quadrant wow. so that i'm able to cover the whole circumference of the breast wow, so you can do either a clockwise or anti-clockwise it doesn't matter Anyone. just okay. end where you started so okay. that you're able to cover the full area so you can start 
this is the first quadrant, quadrant two, three, four, and then where I started from. Again. You realize that okay. I missed the central part. So Pass. after I've gone through the quadrant, then I go ahead mm -hmm. to examine the central, central part as well. Part. You realize I'm pressing the breast tissue against the chest the, wall. Yes. So the, that if there's anything in between there, you would, you would actually feel it. Feel it. Okay. So when you're done, you don't forget that we have an auxiliary tail of the breast, which is in the armpit. So you just go through there just to be sure that wow. there's no lump in there. And then when you're done, you express the nipple in two planes this way and then this way so that if there's discharge. any nipple discharge you don't so miss it coming. this doesn't wow. take up to five minutes of your time so just take five minutes at least out before of your, baiting you can just do out that. of your busy schedule five minutes to so just do a quick self breast exam every month wow then you just go through the same motion for the, for the right breast as well wow, wow. so that's thanks about that. it that's yeah. about it thanks for that. so you were talking about the clinical yes so um for the screening process we have three steps the triple assessment we have the clinical assessment where you come to see your doctor and then she examines your breast clinically okay and then we have the imaging for the imaging, this is where we make use of our ultrasound scans, our mammograms, mammograms even MRIs, yeah. yes, to do the screening okay. and to see exactly what's inside the breast. And then for the third one, we have cytology or pathology. This is where we take part of the breast tissue and we study it under the microscope to decide if what you have is even a cancer or not. Okay. And even if it's a cancer, what type of cancer, cancer is it? Yes. Okay, okay. So this is this, these are the screening processes wow, you wow, go through. Wow, yes. wow, thank you for that. But so, it depends. Okay. It depends on your age. It depends on your um, complaints. Not everyone has exactly. to go through this whole Those thing. Those processes. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. With um, with regards to the complaints, some bear, bear their complaints, and just using one option, you may be able to yes. detect it and yes, get what and you decide want. what to do for oh, the patient. Okay, yes. okay, okay. So I I I would tend to think that um, can the seriousness of cancer depends on on the stage with which it has gotten to. Yes. yes, so here I want you to explain um, the different stages to us and how serious it is and if there are um, the features of the different stages. Okay, so um, cancer can be a bit tricky and as you said rightly, we do move from, you know, a very okay stage, stage to a very bad stage, stage where there's not much we can do about it but the staging can be a bit technical mm. i'm just trying to go i'm yes. going to try to go through go it as simply as, as i can yeah. so clinically we use what we call the t and m staging okay. the t stands for the tumor and in the tumor we are looking at the size so there are um, lumps that are less than two centimeters lumps between two to five centimeters, okay. lumps more than five centimeters, five centimeters. and then there are lumps that are at attached to the skin or the underlying muscle of the mm, chest. Attached to the skin. Exactly. So that's how we group them when it comes okay. to the tumor itself. Okay, okay. And then when we come to the end, it's um, called lymph node involvement. Lymph nodes are part of your immune system. Okay. They are glands that sort of um, filter bad substances so the breast has its own lymphatic okay. system. So the N um, simply refers to how they are affected in breast cancer. Okay. So N0 means there are no lymph node involvement. N1, it means there are lymph node involvement, but it's not too bad. So bad. you can't even move the lymph okay. nodes around. Okay. N2, you can't even move the lymph nodes. They are stuck. And then N3, there are other lymph node involvement, such as we have some here, infraclavicular, supraclavicular, all those I things come into play. And then the spread. So you can have breast cancer, which is just on your chest, just okay. on the breast, no spread to anywhere else. But okay. breast cancer can spread to spread, anywhere, yeah. to your brain, to your chest, wow. to your bone, to your abdomen. So when we talk about the M, it's metastasis, spread to spread. other organs. Okay. Zero means there's no met. No and then one means there's definitely spread to your brain, to your Depending. chest, somewhere else, yeah. else in the body. Yes. Wow. So that's wow. the stage. And wow. Yeah. wow, wow, wow. Okay, thank you for this. We'll mm -hmm. go on a quick break yes. and we'll continue. Um, viewers, this has been Ladies Digest, and you've missed a lot if you've just joined, but you can always catch us up on our social media handles where you can watch the full thing from the beginning. And we'll go on a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue.
Welcome back, and we've been speaking with Dr. Emilia, and she's spoken to us a, a lot about the causes of, um, okay, causes which are not known of cancer, and she has spoken also about the predisposing factors of cancer, and also the signs and symptoms, and she did a very practical um, screening or home screening for us, and then you can go back and watch too, so you can learn from it. Okay, so we'll continue with the, we stopped at the um, stages, so... Fine. It's a, we've been a lady has been diagnosed with um, a breast cancer. Yeah, breast cancer in a particular stage. Uh, would you first of all, we ask, is there treatment for ca breast cancer? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Then. That's why we keep preaching detect, detect, early, early detection. detection. Early There's detection. definitely successful treatment. Wow. Yes. Okay. So can you just walk us through the treatments? Maybe the different stages. Okay. So treatment for breast cancer is. Uh, you have to bring every, it's, it's all your healthcare providers and okay. then the patients. I see. You have to sit down, you have to talk about it, you have to decide what is right for the patients. We have a bit of different options. Yeah. Um, we have the local regional, which deals with attacking w exactly where the disease is, which is the breast. Okay. So for that, we have the surgery okay. and then radiation. Okay. So for surgery, you can have the wide local excision where you take out just the part of the cancer with a fair amount of healthy tissue around it. Okay. And then for the total mastectomy, you don't take out just the cancer, you take you out the whole the breast. breast. Okay, yes. I've heard of so some celebrities who... Yes, yeah, you take out... Western world. You, you just don't want any trouble, so you just take just out the take whole out. breast. Because yes. since you say it spreads, if you leave it there, you can still have a way of spreading. Yes. And but once chances, it's taken out, the once chances taken are out, quite low. Uh, yes, the chances are quite slim, slim but okay. the chances of you getting it in the other breast it's also there. So most That's people, true. sometimes doctors advise people to actually take out both, if they can, if huh. they can. It's a wow. difficult choice, but yeah. if they can. Yes, and then we have radiation. Radiation is usually after surgery or even for palliative, but for people who have spread to their bones, okay. it helps with the pain. Okay. And then um, we have the systemic treatments. That's when chemotherapy comes chemo. in. I know everyone knows chemo, about chemotherapy. Chemo, chemo. Um, yeah. So we, we have the new adjuvant chemo. and the adjuvant okay. chemotherapy. New adjuvant is giving the chemo before the surgery. The okay. main purpose of this is to reduce the size of the tumor before the surgery. And then the adjuvant is after the surgery oh, to get okay. rid of any cancer cells that may have been okay. left behind. Okay. Yes. So chemo can be done on, it's not a treatment on its own? It's, it can be a treatment okay. on its own. Okay. But the management is it's, it's, it's mainly dependent on the outcome we want and very okay. specific to the patient. Patients. So okay. no management okay. is the same for two different patients. Okay, okay. That's and then true. we have hormonal as well. The purpose of the hormonal treatment is to reduce estrogen exposure. So okay. we use medications that are medications such as tamoxifen, zoladex to okay. reduce estrogen as okay. well. Yes. But usually what we do is we do a bit of combination of everything depending on the needs of the patient the or even the stage of the of the cancer. Disease. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So let's talk about this treatment and um, fertility. I uh, per my research. Okay, let me just ask: Is it is can any of the treatments you've mentioned the um, the chemo and the surgery and all? Can any of the treatments in any way affect um, the fertility of a woman? Yes, definitely. Okay, definitely. so okay. Yes, um, chemotherapy, radiation, even the hormonal treatments, they definitely have an effect on your fertility. Okay, and. Um, what happens is, the younger you are, the better your chances with your facility. Okay, sure. Yes. Sure. So, women in their 30s are able to, they are able to still maintain their fertility function even after exposure to very high doses of chemotherapy. Okay. But if you're over 40, your chances of getting back to fertility is, is very, very, low. very low. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So it definitely affects okay. your fertility. It's the chemotherapy, even the treatment of the breast cancer affects the function of the ovaries and the, the quality ovaries. Well, of, of the, the eggs, eggs you yes. produce. Yes. Well, I see. Yes. And it pushes you into pre mature menopause I see. either permanently or temporary, temporary. yes it oh, pushes okay. you into premature menopause, menopause. Yes. Oh. so the younger you are the better your chances but the older you are mm. neither here nor there no there's it's yeah. just a 50 50 thing so are there um should i say proactive measures that okay let's say a lady comes to you 
she's of the childbearing age but then she has to undergo one of the forms of treatment are there ways or would there be any pre preemptive action or um, that would be taken to prevent or to save i don't know if to say eggs or something so that when yeah. she's done with the treatment she, she can, can actually yeah, have a baby, yes, baby. Yes. um yes so there's the option of freezing the eggs or the embryos the freezing of the embryos, which is the fertilized egg, okay. has shown to have better outcomes. And um, it's okay to try. I mean, if it's too, if you can't freeze the eggs after your treatment, you can start yeah. trying after maybe six months. Okay. But the the most practicable, proactive ways of maintaining your fertility is to freeze. The embryo. the embryo okay yeah. and when you're done you can yes you can, you can go always through go the... back yes oh, okay. go back that, and try to use okay it. at least there's a positive side oh, yes, to there it is, there is, I feel okay so you mentioned in your introduction that you volunteer with a um, reconstructive breast reconstructive mm -hmm. team so I want to talk about the reconstructive aspect of this whole thing I know some ladies when they are done for instance maybe they have to remove both breasts they may want to do something like to build their um, breast and all that is, are there okay yeah there, is, there are options but can you walk us through the options okay. available yes so we have the breast forms those are very simple you mm -hmm. don't have breast it's like just like putting on a bra okay they are the same shade of your skin you find the right size which is like very similar to the size of the other breast yes. it has okay. a nipple okay. and then you just put it in your bra so it's mainly for dressing out dressing to go out yeah so it's just like a bra you put it on at the end of the day you take it off and then the following day you put it on again so that's another op that's one option. option and then we have the breast reconstruction the plastic surgery okay. as well um there's the option of doing it during the mastectomy when they're taking out your breast they're putting in another one wow. so there's that option and there's the option of taking it out and waiting weeks months even years after taking out your breast you can still do your breast reconstruction reconstruction yes. okay and for that we have two main options we have the autologous reconstruction where you take tissue from another part of the body to help with the reconstruction of the breast and then um, we have the artificial reconstruction where we use an silicone. artificial yes okay. the silicone is the most common okay. one to rebuild the breast okay yes. okay so when this is done especially let's focus on the tissue removing maybe tissue from the stomach fat tissues and using can they for a breastfeeding can they breastfeed still not likely Ah, okay. Not likely. Okay, yeah. not likely. Okay, so it's just still for it's, it's for the, it's, yes, it's definitely for you to for feel their, exactly. People yeah. are very attached to their yes. breasts. I mean, you've had it for mm. a long time since you were like twelve. Yes. <laughs> so yes, it makes sense. Sudden. It makes sense for you to be attached to your breast. So yes. it's mainly for the image. Yes. Yes, yes it's see. mainly for building the outward yeah, appearance. Because to me, um, the breast is part of, I think it's one of the major attributes of a lady. Yeah. So if it's not there, especially if maybe there is one and there is another isn't, is not, isn't there, it will be so odd. And yeah. I think for self-confidence. Yes, it's, people it's use good. it a lot for, yeah. for that. Yes. For their self-confidence. Okay, another is, is breast cancer preventable? Okay, that's a funny question. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we don't know the cause, you don't know definitely what to do to prevent breast cancer. Okay. But as we went through our uh, risk factors, we realized there were some that we had control over, some okay. that we didn't have control, have control over. Okay, so just yeah. go through the risk factors, decide the ones that you have control over, and change your lifestyle. Sure. So lifestyle modification is the main way to go. To go. Can you quit smoking? Can you stop drinking? Can you exercise a bit more? Can you um, eat? healthy yes these are the things you have to talk about these are the things that you have to put into consideration these are the things you can change so if you can these are the things you should be looking at oh, and then okay you know the endocrine part too yeah 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 if you can it's true it's true if you can you should yeah. be looking into those things as well okay so we're almost rounding up but um before the final one um about the reconstructive um, surgery um i guess there will be some psychological aspects as to that in, in terms of maybe letting them know that okay when you do this these you may not get your um original breast back yeah, yeah. i just want to know if um, the team involved in yes yeah, yes doing the that. breast cancer unit 
really has an extensive team. Okay. They do a lot of counseling, a lot of therapy for people that undergo breast cancer. It's not just breast cancer. Yeah. Battling with cancer is very stressful on not just the individual but the yeah. whole family okay. so we offer counseling for the whole team we talk to them about yeah. uh, how it's i mean it's, it's going to build the image but it's not the same it's sure yes definitely. you don't get the same sense um sen sensation, sensation yeah. yes yeah. as time goes on the skin becomes a bit sensitive but it's not as good as the original. The breast. original, yes. definitely. So it's mainly just to build the okay. outward appearance, but you okay. don't get the same feelings. It's true, definitely. Yes, outfit, yes. Okay, so finally, um, I would you can speak to Camera on that, but many um, ladies, whether they are breast cancers and um, survivors or not, they always ask questions as to living life as either a survivor or a patient trying to um, get or that has been um, cured, treated. Mm -hmm. I wanted to speak to that um, life of a survivor. Or, life yeah. of a survivor. So yes, as the name indicates, you survived breast cancer. Sure. It's a very tough battle, but this is a battle you won. So this, you can live a full life after breast cancer. Breast cancer is definitely curable. Early detection is key. That's why it's important that you come to us as quickly as you can. This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Please take the opportunity to visit us. Stay Well Healthcare. We are offering free breast screening from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. So please make time and get your breast screened if you have not done that already. Every hospital I know is offering free breast cancer screening. So you don't have an excuse. You don't need to travel all the way here to have your breast screened. Go to the closest yes. hospital and have your breast screened. But life after cancer is, is still life. It's still life. You can live your yeah, best life, life after, after breast after. cancer. So don't let breast cancer be the end of your life. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that assurance because I know I can imagine and uh, know that some people can really be traumatized yes, when they yes. get that um, diagnosis or that result that mm -hmm. you have. And the first question will be, where do I start from? Yeah. How do I even go about it? But at least it's a good assurance that there is still life after oh, is, breast cancer is, yeah, yeah, and the treatment. And, and that is why um, early detection is very, very important. important. At least you can nip it in the board and it's, everything is still normal. Yes. So I want to thank you for Finding time, squeezing time out of your busy schedule because <laughs> this month for you, it's a very, very busy month. And at least we were able to steal you for some time. We really yeah. appreciate your presence. I appreciate you and we hope to that. see you some other time. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. you. It was welcome. a pleasure talking to you. Same here, same here. Yeah, this has been Ladies Digest, and we've been discussing breast cancer with, um, diagnosis and uh, treatment. And as um, Dr. Emilia said, woman, know thy breast. You should, you should know your breast. And if you do, I don't think you will go through the stress of, of getting to the like very late stage before you find out something and early detection is key as i said this has been ladies digest and i'm joan Equia. you are you can always catch us up on our social media handles on facebook and youtube at the association of african universities and follow our instagram handle at ladies digest till i come your way next time to stay blessed